Hi boys and girls, my name is Miss Lab. I teach kindergarten at Del Mar Elementary in Morro Bay, California, right near the ocean. And I am here to just say hi to you and to let you know that I get to narrate lots of amazing books um, over the course of the next few weeks um, that I hope you'll really enjoy and that you'll um, get to talk with your families about and have fun. Okay, here goes the very first book. It's called, What Do You Do With a Problem? Whenever a problem arises, we must look at it closely to see how big it is. If we make a problem bigger than it is, we might miss a chance to learn something about ourselves and our loved ones. What do you do with a problem? Written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by May Besson. What do you do with a problem? I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem? I thought. I wanted it. Oops, I misskipped a word. I wanted to make it go away. I shooed it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes all Whoops, I messed a word again. What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and I worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself. But it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. So even though 
I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid. I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. Boys and girls, I can think of a time that I had a problem and I made it so big, so big. My problem was huh, that I wanted a sandwich and I didn't have any bread. Doesn't sound like a very big problem, but when I wanted that sandwich, it felt really big. And all I kept thinking was, I can't have a sandwich. I can't have a sandwich. I can't have a sandwich. And then I realized I was doing just like the boy did in the book. I was making the problem too big. I bet you've done that too. We all have. And I ended up having to think about my problem and figure out, oh, wait, I can't have a sandwich, but I have some ham and I have some cheese, and I have some lettuce, and some tomato. Hmm. And I made a salad, and I had crackers with it. And you know what, boys and girls? It was delicious, just as good as the sandwich had been. So now you get to talk with your parents about, with, about the book with some questions guiding your parents and your discussion, and we hope that you learn and grow from little problems and big problems. Thanks. Bye.